I rise today to talk a bit about our economy and the marketplace, which uh, if anybody has observed, is in shambles. A couple years ago, we had a financial crisis, basically uh, a bit of problems and debt with the financial institutions, the banks, and a lot of corporations. And that was a rather hectic period of time, but I think what we're moving into now is much, much more serious. And what I see happening is that this is not a financial problem as much as a currency problem. Everybody knows there are major problems in Greece right now because of the debt load that they have and they cannot finance, and nobody's there at the moment to bail them out. But uh, a, lot has, uh, a lot has been happening. Uh, and I've been interested in this subject for a long time. Matter of fact, in 1971, uh, with the breakdown of the Bretton Woods Agreement, I became fascinated with economics and politics. At that time, there was a devaluation of the dollar of 3.5%, 3.8%, and it was very, very big news. And that's when the dollar was connected to gold and there was a devaluation against gold. And uh, this uh, was a major event and ushered in a major amount of inflation in the 1970s. And yet, uh, this process continues. Matter of fact, the breakdown in 1971 opened up the doors to massive inflation, and that's what we have been doing for 35, 40 years of inflating the currency, creating many uh, and multiple financial bubbles which have uh, burst and have given us a great deal of trouble. But a currency crisis is much worse because people lose confidence in the dollar. Now, I have talked a lot about the value of the dollar, and somebody might wonder exactly why I would come today and talk about a concern I have for the value of the dollar, because if you look at the dollar, the dollar is a haven. The dollar has been going up sharply uh, in terms of other international currencies. And uh, they would say that uh, this is a haven. It's still strong. People are buying our treasury bills. But I still argue the case that there is a currency crisis going on. Because if you look at the one true money, the one money that has existed for 6,000 years that outlasts all the paper money and all the fiat currency, and that is gold. And it doesn't look very good. And it's sending a signal that uh, a lot of inflation lurks uh, in, in the future. In the past several years, maybe even 10 or 15 years, the dollar and the gold relationship uh, depended on uh, gold acting as a commodity. It moved with the stock market. It moved with commodity prices. But no longer, instead of the gold going down when the stocks uh, went down, uh, and instead of the uh, gold going down when the commodities go down, instead of the gold going down when the dollar uh, goes up, all of a sudden, people are resorting to putting dollars and other currencies in gold. This is sending a signal that the confidence is being lost in the entire fiat monetary system. And the dollar, of course, is the, is the reserve currency of the world and therefore a very uh, significant uh, event. But there are even other statistics to suggest that we're in for a lot more inflation. If we look at what has happened to producer prices in the past 12 months, we find out that producer prices have already, already moved up significantly. Uh, for instance, uh, finished consumer goods are up 8.2% in the last 12 months. Finished consumer goods, uh, excluding food, are up 8.3%. Finished energy goods are up 20%. Now, that, doesn't, that has not yet affected the consumer price index, but in the months to come, the producer prices will move into the consumer products so we can expect uh, a, lot, a lot more in inflation. Now, the way we get into this trouble is, is due to accepting some notions about money that are false. We have believed since 1971 that there should be no linkage of our money to anything sound as the Constitution mandates. There should be no linkage of the dollar to gold or silver, which then gives the Congress the leeway of spending endlessly. Deficits don't matter. We can tax and we can borrow, but if we still don't have enough money, we can depend on the Federal Reserve just to print the money. Now that has lasted for a long time and we've been getting away with it, but the market is more powerful than the central bank and the politicians. The market usually rules and they come and say, the money isn't worth what it used to be and there's too much malinvestments, too much debt, 
and therefore a correction must occur. This happened with the financial situation. There had to be a correction, the bubble burst, and there are some adjustments. But everything that we have done over these past several years and even over the last several decades, it's always been to resort to more inflation, print more money, spend more money, which only produces a pro problem that is delays the inevitable. What I am afraid the is the inevitable is expired. here, and we must do something about it.